Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this devlog I'm going to tackle tree generation and make some improvements to my water system. Okay, so it's Wednesday, just before 5 o'clock, and to be honest, the last couple days have been a bit rough. On Monday, I did my first live stream, and that actually went super well. I think we peaked at over 30 people watching, which I definitely wasn't expecting, and I really enjoyed hanging out with everyone that showed up. Streams will probably become a regular thing, although I'm not sure how often, and I still need to figure out when the best time to stream actually is. On stream, I modeled this nice low poly palm tree, and I learned a lot about Blender from those of you that were watching. Believe it or not, I'm still relatively new to Blender, and while I know the most basic stuff, I'm quite unfamiliar with most of the tools that can make your life a whole lot easier, such as the ray modifiers. That evening, I went to bed super stoked to get to work the next morning. But when Tuesday morning actually came, I just couldn't get myself to do anything. I think in large part that was because I had planned to implement some sort of system to procedurally place objects like the palm tree on the islands, but I wasn't actually sure how to go about doing it. Obviously, this system needs to be deterministic to ensure that it produces the same result each time given the same input values, but I don't know what approach to take. I watched Sebastian Lag's video on Poisson disk sampling, which might work, but because I'm not confident that it's the right solution, I've been putting it off. Basically, because I'm not sure what to do, I haven't done anything, and that has carried over into today. On top of that, I feel like I should be planning this weekend's video instead of working on the project, so that hasn't helped either. Another thing holding me back is that it seems like procedural object placement would be easier if I had a chunk system already in place. More accurately, I suspect that I'll end up redoing object placement once the world is split into chunks, and I'd prefer to avoid doing something twice. I really hate feeling like I'm wasting my time, and I've definitely done a lot of that in the last 48 hours, and it honestly really, really sucks. I just don't understand how I can procrastinate so much, even though I know I'm going to regret it later. Maybe some of you can relate, or maybe you can't, and I'm not sure if I'm actually explaining it well, but I'm in absolute disbelief whenever I think about it. I love the feeling of getting things done, and I hate wasting my time, and yet I tend to actively choose to waste time. It would probably be funny if it wasn't so frustrating. Anyways, despite the fact that I haven't even done any work on object placement, I think I need to do and focus on something else. I'm not getting anywhere like this, and it doesn't seem like that's going to magically change anytime soon. I might as well work on swimming mechanics or do some cleanup, since I didn't get around to that in the last devlog. Or maybe I should work on a chunking system so that the lack of one no longer prevents me from implementing procedural object placement. So it's been nearly a week, and quite a lot has happened, although not really progress-wise. I spent most of last week procrastinating, planning and recording what was supposed to be Saturday's video, and then avoiding the editing for two days. I'm going to keep this short since it's not really related to this project, but basically I had the entire video recorded and I wanted to edit it on Friday. That would have allowed me to perform an experiment by uploading it in the morning instead of on Saturday evening like I usually do. According to my YouTube analytics, most of my audience is on YouTube in the mornings, and I was, and still am, curious if uploading when most of my audience is online would majorly affect the video's performance in the long term. Of course, it's always hard to tell in these kinds of experiments since no two videos will perform the same in the same conditions because of all the variables involved. However, I didn't even run the experiment. After not doing any editing on Friday, that kind of went out the window. Then on Saturday, I found myself at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I still hadn't started. After a lot of thought, I decided not to upload a video. This was not an easy decision to make. You guys are generally very understanding about this kind of stuff, so I wasn't worried about you judging me or getting upset, but I don't want to make skipping uploads a habit, and I thought I was going to judge myself. I have my schedule of one video per week for two main reasons. First, it keeps me accountable, and it usually helps me be productive. I know I need to work on my game so that I actually have something to talk about, and without the Saturday deadline, non-devlog videos would probably never happen. Second, the algorithm rewards consistency. If you've ever done any research about how to grow on YouTube, chances are that you've heard the phrase, consistency is king. As I was sitting there on Saturday afternoon with something like 6 hours of boring editing ahead of me, I realized that the previous two days of feeling like I should be doing something productive, but not actually following through had put me in a pretty bad place mentally. Although I did take a break from working on this project during the first week of the previous devlog, I was still working on other things and it dawned on me that I couldn't remember the last time I had given myself permission to spend a day simply doing nothing. So I decided not to upload a video on Saturday. As I said, that wasn't easy because I don't want this to become a habit where I just come up with some excuse to skip a video. The more often you do something that you've told yourself you wouldn't do, the easier it becomes to do that very thing, and I don't want that to happen. 
Plus, I don't want to hamper the channel's growth, but obviously if I run myself into the ground and have to take an extended break, that will hurt the channel even more in the long run. Anyways, I really enjoyed not doing anything for the rest of the weekend without feeling guilty about it, and I'll be uploading the video I skipped the weekend after this devlog comes out. That's enough of that though, because I've actually made some progress with the game. I've decided not to skip tree generation after all. I thought about this a lot, and at one point even considered abandoning procedural generation altogether and going the hand built approach, but I now have some trees spawning on the islands. And by some, I really mean way too many. Right now I'm just looping through all the island's vertices, and if a vertex is above sea level, a tree has a chance to spawn there. This is with a 70% spawn rate, which is clearly way too high, but I was really surprised to see that it's not actually super obvious that all the trees are technically spawning on a grid. That was my main concern, and a huge reason why I was considering skipping tree generation for now. I assumed that using the terrain's vertices as spawn points would result in a very grid-like forest, but I honestly should have just tried it out. I still need to prevent trees from spawning on steep slopes, and then I think I'll also add an offset on the horizontal plane to really make sure there's no noticeable grid. Also, this is all just client side at the moment, so I still need to add colliders on the server, but I'm going to do all that tomorrow. It's 11am on Thursday now, and yesterday I prevented trees from spawning on slopes. I also drastically reduced the spawn rate, and I added the colliders to the server so you can no longer walk directly through trees. I'm actually really satisfied with how this looks, despite my previous concerns about the trees spawning in a noticeable grid. With this amount of trees, it's remarkably hard to tell. As for adding an offset to the tree position, I ended up deciding against that for now because I just don't think it's necessary. The generation looks random enough as it is, so it doesn't really make sense to add more complexity to my code for little to no benefit. On a different note, I realized that I won't be able to use a raycast to determine if the camera is above or below the water. Since I'm using Gerstner waves, the closest you can get to a formula is an approximation, but that sometimes leads to the water fog effect not being enabled even though you're already below the water surface. After talking through the problem with some people on Discord two weeks ago, I thought I'd be able to solve the problem by using a raycast to check if the camera is above or below the water plane. However, when I went to implement this yesterday, I remembered that raycasts only work against objects with colliders, and my water plane doesn't have a collider. I could of course attach a mesh collider to the water, but then I'd need to update its vertices every frame, which could be terrible for performance. After some thinking, I'm pretty sure I can use some math to get the information a raycast would have given me, so I think I'm going to experiment with that a bit. Quite a few hours have passed, and I'm actually going to go to bed soon, but I managed to get a lot done. First and foremost, I improved the submersion detection for the camera, which means that the water fog is properly enabled and disabled depending on whether or not the camera is above the water surface. There are still cases where you get a glimpse of what's beneath the surface without the fog being active, but this is simply because sections of the camera's view frustum sometimes intersect with the water plane without the camera itself actually being below the surface. I'm not sure how much I'll be able to do about that, although maybe it isn't actually necessary to do something about it since it's not super noticeable, it doesn't happen very often, and even when it does happen, it's only for a fraction of a second. It's pretty much impossible to position yourself in a way where this could be exploited, at least in an unhacked client. However, if someone has managed to hack the game, there's not much I can do to prevent them from seeing underwater anyways. Instead of going to the much greater effort of trying to position themselves appropriately, they could simply disable the water fog entirely. In order to achieve this improved submersion detection, I ended up deciding against using a bunch of fancy math. The task of finding the three vertices of the triangle of the water mesh directly below the camera at any given point seemed pretty daunting, especially when you consider that those vertices move horizontally as well as vertically since I'm using Gerstner waves. I would have had to pick a bunch of vertices around the camera, transform all of them using the Gerstner wave equation, and then figure out which triangle the camera was above. From there it would have been possible to calculate the height of the triangle's plane at the camera's horizontal position. However, if I was going to go to the trouble of transforming all these points, I figured I might as well just create a small mesh collider that moves with the camera and transform its vertices. From there I can simply raycast against the collider and get the height at the position I'm looking for. This may be a bit less efficient than if I had taken the mathematical approach, but the code is easier to understand and less error prone, and it spares me from having to do a bunch of math. Additionally, I made the water move with the camera, which means that I technically have a truly infinite world now. This also means that my water fog effect now works anywhere in the world, and there won't be any more incidents where you sail off the edge of the water, only to find out that your ship can fly. Anyways, since I didn't get to experiment with a different upload time last week, 
I'd like to try uploading this devlog on Saturday morning, which means I need to get all the editing done tomorrow, so that will be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to obliterate the like button for me. It really helps me out. If you'd like to give me an even bigger boost, leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of this development journey. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next Saturday with another video.